So like everything on this channel, I'm super interested in optimizing day-to-day -day workflows and staying dry in the rain is no exception to that. So let's jump in. So we've got this well-known problem with waterproof fabrics in that they stop your sweat and moisture coming out as well as they stop rain coming in. So basically that's why the industry is so keen on pushing this breathability idea. But there's breathability and there's breathability. So you can have vapor pass through a waterproof fabric and that, you know that's what Gore-Tex does. It lets vapor come through, but it doesn't let liquid water through. So you can still be sweating on the inside and that liquid water can't come out. And in the same way, your vapor can condense if that surface is cold Cold, and you get liquid water on the inside which can't then come through. So there's an interesting problem that happens here. So if your moisture can't escape, you get humid air near your skin. That then heats you up which then makes you sweat more and you basically get this vicious circle of potentially feeling incredibly uncomfortable wear when you're wearing waterproof clothing. So that problem Paramo solved uh, really well with their analogy fabric. So it lets liquid water go through from the inside to the outside and that process keeps the rain out as well as letting your moisture come out even if it's cold outside and you've got condensation at play as well. So we've talked about Gore-Tex and Paramo coats. So essentially the difference between those is Gore-Tex is a membrane coat and there are lots of different membranes. It's not just Gore-Tex. Uh, they're basically completely waterproof because it's a membrane um, and they let vapor through because of the holes in the membrane, but they can't let liquid water through. Then you've got fabrics like Analogy from Paramo, which let liquid water and vapor through. Uh, and then as a result, will actually let water through if it's kind of forced through under pressure like under a rucksack strap but overall it's moving liquid away from you and you can actually feel really comfortable and I was a big fan of Paramo uh, I definitely can attest to their performance so really the main appeal with the Paramo coats is you haven't got to wait for your sweat to evaporate into vapor before it can escape the coat it can just be whipped through your layers uh, you know straight out of the coat as liquid water so that is what makes this feeling of wearing a Paramo coat so comfortable you know you're, you're, it's actually really dry you feel very dry near your skin because of that ability to regulate the moisture. So again, another advantage to the Paramo system is you can put it on when you're already wet. If you put the hood up over you and you've already got wet hair, it doesn't matter. It'll just take that moisture away from you. Uh, with a membrane coat, that moisture is stuck in there until it evaporates from your body heat. So if your body heat's getting that hot that it's evaporating, you're probably starting to feel pretty uncomfortable. Uh, so that's the kind of difference that we're talking about here. So for all those benefits, the main downside is the fabric itself with the Paramo coat is pretty bulky, it's quite heavy. Uh, and it does add a lot of warmth because it's so thick. So that's the problem that we're left with. So obviously you have to make a choice according to what kind of activities you're doing. Obviously there are situations when the Paramo coat is gonna work really well. Uh, if you're kind of walking out on the hills and you need the toughness of the Paramo coat, you can do that. But for me, just with the goal of having a waterproof coat as a day-to-day -day kind of thing, I'm not really doing any massive hiking operations or anything like that, I don't need the toughness of a proper coat. I just want to be able to keep the rain off if it rains. So what I was trying to achieve was separating the waterproofing from the warming so that I could just have one waterproof coat to keep the rain off and I can then just control my temperature by wearing different clothes and I don't have to think about them being waterproof. I just wear another jumper or something if it's cold, you know, and you get the comfort of wearing a wool jumper, which is lovely, you know, really good, good fabric for keeping you warm. Uh, if you can then make that waterproof when it needs to be. So I started looking for something sort of ultra small, ultra light, ultra thin uh, with huge breathability. And there really isn't that much on the market. There are raincoats that sort of claim to be breathable, um, but they're not that breathable. They're still sort of, you know, your standard kind of shell jackets and they're not that packable either. But there was one exception and that uses the Gore-Tex shake dry fabric. And this is an unbelievably interesting fabric. So it's super thin. It's basically the material that is inside a Gore-Tex coat normally this is the whole coat, it's just made of that, it has no protective fabric on the outside. So the interesting thing about Gore-Tex membranes is by themselves they're actually incredibly breathable. The problem is when you put them in a normal coat with a fabric outer layer, you have to stop that fabric outer layer becoming saturated with water because if that happens, you have a sort of film of solid water outside the membrane and that stops it being breathable completely. Obviously there's no water coming in, but you've got a film of water in that outer fabric. That's what stops them being breathable and that's why you have to reproof Gore-Tex coats. And I, you know, for a while I couldn't get my head around why we were being told to reproof Gore-Tex coats. If it's a membrane, it shouldn't need reproofing. So it's not about adding the waterproofness back, it's actually adding the water repellency to the outer fabric back to stop it becoming saturated and wetting out because it's that that stops the coat being breathable. So once I got my head around that, the idea of a Gore-Tex shake dry jacket, which doesn't have that outer fabric, 
sounded incredibly appealing. So you get the benefit of the, the full breathability of the Gore-Tex membrane, which is really, really breathable. It still doesn't let liquid water through, but it's incredibly breathable for vapor. And you haven't got this problem of needing to retreat it all the time to maintain that breathability. Now, the interesting thing is this coat is actually designed for running. It's not marketed as an everyday coat at all. And I kind of can't help but think the industry wants it to be pitched that way because it's this one coat that can kind of replace all of my current coats. So there, as it sort of strikes me that they're selling this to runners as a way of keeping it away from the, the normal everyday coat market because I think it has the potential to kind of shake up the whole thing. So it's worth noting that the Paramo coats also need retreating and they actually need the retreatment for the waterproofness. Without the fibres in the Paramo layers being water repellent, it won't push the water through. Uh, it sort of behaves like animal fur. The fibres themselves need to be hydrophobic to kind of actively move that water through. So you do need to reproof a Paramo coat. So the idea of having to reproof normal Gore-Tex coats is not a disaster. It's not like that's a massive downside. Um, it just strikes me that I think a lot of people wearing a waterproof coat, they think it's got the Gore-Tex membrane, so they're not quite sure why they have to reproof it um, and they don't bother and then the outer fabric when it gets wet saturates and then they feel uncomfortable and they're kind of thinking mm, maybe I need a different coat so this sort of you know, the industry kind of just bumbles along with people spending huge amounts of money on these coats all the time for different times of year as well. So if we go back to the shake dry we can see really what an amazing uh, workflow improvement it is. It's indefinitely waterproof. The fabric itself is is the membrane and that is waterproof and when you put water on it it's completely repellent. It's like a duck's back but that's as a result of the membrane itself. It's not as a result of any treatment. That doesn't need replenishing. Um, so absolutely amazing to see this in you know it's it's truly waterproof um, and you can just shake it and it's pretty much dry. There are sort of tiny little beads that sort of stick to the surface. You have to kind of shake them off um, but it is an unbelievable material and as a result of that of course it's unbelievably light and unbelievably packable and I can literally just keep it in my pocket um, which just changes my day-to-day -day workflow massively. Uh, I don't have to consider if it's going to rain. I'm not umming and ahhing about what to wear. If I think it's going to rain I need to take a big coat and then I need to take my jumper off because I'm going to be too hot. I just wear what it is you know for the time of year a, a merino jumper and a merino shirt is generally will see me through most of the year in England and then I just keep this in my pocket for when it rains. So, you know, just, just like a massive workflow improvement. It's possible that in really cold areas where you're sort of wearing an insulated jacket, a down jacket, you might want to get a version of this coat that's just the bigger size so that it'll go over that in the winter um, and you just switch between those two according to the time of year. In the summer you wear your smaller one, in the winter you have the bigger one. And that solves this other major issue that the industry constantly tries to sell you more products and better versions of and that's keeping a down jacket dry. You know, they're, they're sort of refining the, the process of making down waterproof and so on or synthetic alternatives and constantly trying to sell the newer better version of this because down is obviously useless when it's wet but you know, if you have a down insulated jacket and then you put one of these over the top you know done <laughs> you get incredible insulation and it's dry so of course we have got a little bit of a compromise here in terms of durability so without that outer fabric over the top the membrane is exposed if you were to rub past a sort of rock or something you're probably going to damage it uh, or even wearing a rucksack I'm not sure how often I'd want to wear a rucksack with this I don't tend to wear rucksacks anyway because I've got most of my stuff in my pockets um, so you another video for that uh, if I'm kind of thinking I, I, it's going to be a bit tough or whatever and I'm still out in the rain I'll just take it put it away and let the merino get a little bit damp um, but wear, wearing merino as your insulation layer is a good system there because if it does get slightly damp it still operates as a thermal layer uh, it locks in the moisture to the fibers and you still feel actually quite comfortable even though your merinos got slightly wet so merino plus shake dry quite a cool combination so it'll be interesting to see how long it lasts as well the other, the other thing is longevity you know I'm stuffing it into its tiny little bag all the time is that going to wear the fabric out over time I'm not sure um, we'll have to see on that but I think it's it's so compelling in terms of its workflow advantage that if that's the cost of it and I have to replace it every three years you know, I have to work that out depending on how long it lasts you know if it lasts four years fine I'll just buy another one if it's sort of two years three years maybe I'll start to rethink so if you found this useful don't forget to click the like button and let me know in the comments below what you do for your raincoat situation it's kind of interesting sort of workflows you know people talk about products and reviews and you know sort of feature based but it's actually interesting sort of looking at day-to-day -day workflow stuff a little bit more which I think a lot of people sort of skip over so if you're new here do click my name below and have a look around the channel uh, hopefully you'll agree it's worth subscribing and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day